You got a cigarette? Don't smoke. That's not what I asked you. What? If you had a cigarette. Don't smoke. So, have you got a cigarette? I don't smoke. You told me that. So why would I have a cigarette? You might have a cigarette. I wouldn't have a cigarette. Did you ever have a cigarette? Well, it's a long time ago. Didn't like it. What'd you do with it? I took a few puffs and threw it away. Was it around here? No, it was on the ground. And it was uh, in New Jersey. Yeah. That's too far away. Haven't you thrown any way around here? Yeah, it was many years ago. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, I'm not picky, you know. Beggars can't be choosers. I mean, I don't care if you have them for a while. Uh, please, Mr. Denver. Ah, Denny. 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 <clears throat> I do not have any cigarettes on my person. I've had no cigarettes on my person since I was a small boy in New Jersey. That was many years ago. Thirty. Well, at least thirty. Yeah. I do not smoke, and I have not done so since a bachelor party in 1963. 1963. Yes, 1963. You know what I was doing in 1963? Smoking. Nah. <laughs> nah. I hit a 21 long shot at Belmont and won 10 grand. Something to see, Bob, and I'm telling you. I'm sure it was. And of course, it wasn't the biggest hit I ever made. I, I had lots of them over and over. Lots of them. Bigger bucks than 10 grand. I'm sure. Yeah. Treatments. Treatments. Oh, treatments. But I was different. I, I couldn't lose in that track. It used to make them shudder just to see me coming through the gate. Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Once out on the coast at Santa Anita. You sure you haven't got a cigarette? I'm sure. Well, anyway, there, there was this stud coal city. Now, you may not know this, but stud coals aren't supposed to be able to run. Huh. You see, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> well, they aren't, see? On account of their... their, their genitals, see? Uh -huh. Yeah. They, they think they're going to strain something, see? So most handicappers figure that a stud cold ain't going to straighten himself, so they don't bend, see, and the odds go up. But not me, no sir. I get down to the track early, and I watch him warming up this cold. He's blowing off quarter miles like nobody's business. But I get my Timex on him, see? So race time comes around, and I'm right there at the window. Regulars are all giving me the bad eye. I put a grand on his nose. Thousand dollar grand. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't think I had a grand on me? Hey, listen, chicken feet, pocket money in them days. And I had dates too. Showgirls from Las Vegas used to get laid every night out on the coast. Right away, Denny, they called me. Yeah. There was this one blonde. Hey, <laughs> she used to hang around my neck like a reek. Did I ever tell you about her? Huh? Did I ever tell you about uh, her? No. Bellman, Bellman, wake up. Not that I recall. Yeah. She said, I met her in this hotel out in San Diego, named after some president or something. The, the hotel, not the babe. <laughs> Boss me over at the bar. Right away, she figures I'm good for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we go up to my room. Huh? I sticks my hand in my pocket. I rustles the roll of the bills that I got there. What's that sound like to you, I says? About 300, she says. What I got a hold of is worth a lot more than 300, I says. But I'll let you have it. Wholesale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. She was a kick in the head, that one. Followed me all the way out to Chicago. Got knocked up or something. 
circulation for a while. Tried to hit me up for more dough. Yeah, I dropped her like a bad habit. Ah. Hey. Tell me something. What's that? Hey. Your name really Bellman. Yeah. Bellman? The Bellman. Three forty 
seven. That's a discount. Four times a day. That's up. I got a bottle of Jim Beam up in my room. Whole fit. Finest Kentucky straight bourbon made in the world. Made in America, by God. Give me my room key. It's your patriotic duty. Thing by 
part. Yeah, but somehow the voices of the actors are much more appealing than yours. Everything about the actors is more appealing than you. Ooh, ouch, you <laughs> cut to the quick. Somebody should cut you somewhere. Yeah, with Slash tearing into my flesh. You can take it. Oh, deeper and deeper, he rips at me with his pickled tongue. Now, shut up. Oh, no. The ultimate intellectual gouge. What possible reply can one have when your opponent calls upon their vast reservoir vocabulary and summons forth the irrefutable, the phrase that silences the thundering heavens and leaves the gods stunned, suspended, mouths agape? Oh, shut up. Like I said, eat it. Up yours. Bite me. Notice how each of my responses refers to an oral fixation. Yeah, I noticed that. And I notice that you notice it. Have you something to tell us? Why not collect all your thoughts? All of them. It won't take very long. Bitch. A female canine, highly intelligent and much more clever than the male of the species. She is responsible for the hunt and not only bears the young but protects them with her life. When cornered, she displays unprecedented valor and strength that far exceeds her physical size. Wanna wrestle? <laughs> Good. Good. Well, go on, you're missing the best part. How would you know? You stagger and drunk and sleep through it every night. I've seen it. Really? Yeah, well, maybe then again, maybe you haven't seen it. What is that supposed to mean? You don't really go in there for the movies, do you, sweetheart? What? I mean, you go in there for other reasons, right? Other reasons? Yeah. Like what? Like what you can do in the dark there, but nobody else can see you. What are you talking about? I've seen you. How? Yeah, sizing up, moving in. What the hell are you talking about? And it isn't guys either. Well, it certainly hasn't been you. Oh, what's the matter? Are you jealous? You're sick. It only happens when I'm around you. Coming <sighs> back in or what? Sure. Hey, you sure you want to go back in there with her? Sure, why not? What are you doing in there? I'm watching the movie. What else? Oh, I see. Haven't gotten around to the good part yet? You know the best part is until the end. Hey, you're new around here. Watch yourself. What you got to be afraid of? We're the only two left in there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, boy. I'm not sure I know what you mean. You'll find out. Come on, let's go back in. The air's getting polluted out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hustle her back in the dark. Look, all hey, I'm trying to say... stop breathing on her. You want to make her sick or something? Come on. Hey, hey, you haven't been around here before, have you? No. Yeah, you, you don't look like you've you ever been in the city before, have you? Have you? Never yes. mind that. We're missing the movie. Yeah. The part I was telling you about is coming up. You don't know about places like this. Places like this? Yeah, places like this with people like her. I don't. If you mean all my joints or drunks like you can sleep it off. Yeah, people with funny ideas, you know. Funny ideas? Yeah. Looks, looks just... I hate to see a nice looking young girl like you. I mean, people take advantage. Yeah, you start of listening me. to him, he's going to have you scared of your own shadow. We have an all night picture show back home. We used to go there after dances and things like that. Well, sure. Nobody gave you a bad time there, did they? Well, well, well this ain't exactly the same thing. Some boys take some beer in once. Beer? The manager had to come in. We were all sent home. Hey, that's pretty serious. I mean, after all, beer and a movie house? That's <laughs> not what I'm talking about, little girl. We couldn't go there for a whole month. Why, this ain't the same thing. Sit down, right, right here, and and you sit out here with Bellman and me, and we're just gonna have a talk. And so you can put the moves on there. Buzz off! Why don't you go back in and watch the movie since you like it so much? Let you work over our little friend here. Yeah, what am I gonna pull with Bellman sitting right there? You'll think of something. I think I'll just stay out here for a minute. They are going to the movie again, aren't they? It never stops. Yeah, over and over. Isn't that right, Bellman? Uh, what's that? The movie. Uh, his title is Foreign Correspondent. It stars Joe McRae and... Yeah, yeah, it runs over and over, right? Continuous screening, 24 hours a day. There, you see? Over and over. But I think I'll just stay out here for a little bit. Ah, good idea. Sure, I've got plenty of time. Hey, maybe like something to drink? Some coffee or something? Cherry Coke? Cherry Coke? I haven't had a Cherry Coke since I got on the bus. Back home, they had the best Cherry Coke. Phillips Drugstore? They were the specialty of the house. Well, I was going to suggest that we go up to my room. I've got some coffee and some soda. And maybe you'd like something to eat. You must be hungry. 
Why don't you insist? Do you have any cherry coke? Well, no, but I could go get us some. There's an all-night market right on the corner. I could go in and be right back. Watch it, sis. And then we could go up to my room. Really? And potato chips? Whatever you want. Hey, 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 you ain't really gonna go back up, up there with her, are you? I haven't had a cherry coke in a long time. You just stay here and I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you just stay right here with me for a minute, okay? Well, I guess it'll be okay. Sure, sure it'll be okay. <laughs> Come on, you, you just sit right over here. And you make yourself at home. Yeah. Now that's better, right? Isn't that nice? Don't, 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 don't. Listen, let me have my key, okay? Come on, come on. Give me my key. I need my key. Yeah, give it to me right now. Three weeks, Mr. Denver. Ah, don't be like that, Bob. Can't you see what's going on here? I can see that you're trying to get your key without paying your past due rental. Oh, come on, for Christ's sakes. You are in arrear, Mr. Denver. Bell! You're an idiot. Insulting me is not going to change my mind. I have my orders. Uh, orders? Yes, orders. What orders? Orders from the manager. What manager? The manager of the hotel. I've never seen a manager around here. Yeah, that doesn't mean we have no manager. Well, if there is a manager, I want to talk to him. He's written down all the rules. I have them memorized. Oh, well, good for you. Even Let's do it. what movies we show. Fine, where is he? Well, he's around all the time, actually. Look, Bellman. JJ's going to be back any minute now. You don't really want to see her take this little know-nothing country girl up to her room, do you? It's not up to me. We're running out of time! Look, miss. Look, what's your name, sweetheart? Celeste. Yeah. Okay, Celeste. You just call me Danny, okay? I mean, I, I, I want to talk to you, see? That's fine. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we got to talk for real serious, see? Okay. Yeah. Look, you know that, that girl you was with in the movies there? You mean JJ? Yeah. 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 She, she's being nice to you, isn't she? She's being very nice to me. Yeah. Yeah, do you, do you don't suppose you know why she's being nice to you, do you? Yeah, she, 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 she wants you to like her, see? I do like her. Yeah, yeah, but, but th that's, a, that's a all she has in mind. She's, she's You don't know about people and, and stuff like that, do you? I don't know what you mean. You know, you know people, they try to get you up someplace, they tell you things, they mean something else and stuff like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> Look, JJ is being nice to you for a reason. I mean, she wants to get you alone in there, in the dark. She's a girl. What difference does that make? It makes a lot of difference. Not to some people. Well, it does to me. That's what I figured. Girls are friends, not, you know. Yeah, right. There were some girls once, back home. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that, that's what I mean. There was one girl, actually. They used to go back down by the lake and look at each other. Look at each other? You know, show each other their private parts. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Look, Celeste, that's what I mean. JJ is kind of like that girl. You know what I mean? I think so. Yeah. So, whatever happened to this girl back home? I mean, I bet she got in a lot of trouble, right? She has her own real estate company. <laughs> Wouldn't want a bunch of cops 
running around in here, would he? Some people from the health department, a couple of building inspectors, you know what I mean? Hmm? Do you know what I mean? I don't think the manager would be very concerned about that. Is that so? I don't think so. Well, there's one way that you could be absolutely sure that there isn't any trouble. Oh, really? Yeah. And what is that? Well, <clears throat> you give me my key, overlook the back rent, and well, I don't say anything, see? I see. Right. I'm afraid. Oh, don't be afraid, Bellman. I mean, when I make a deal, it's a deal. I mean, I can keep my trap shut. Christ, I mean, I've, I've worked with the best of them. The high ups. They knew me. Broadway Denny. They trusted me. They told me things. Because they trusted me. I knew a lot of stuff. Names. Places. Stuff nobody else knew. They trusted me because they knew I would keep my trap shut. Didn't I tell you about the hit they made on Don Angelino, huh? Well, didn't I? You see what I mean? I see what you mean. Well then, well, how about it then? How about my key? Are you concerned about the young lady? Sure, sure. That's why I don't want my key. I'll take her up to my place where she can be safe. I was taught never to go into a man's hotel room, especially alone. Yeah, no, 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 sis, no, no, you, that's, that's, that's not what I mean. I'm, I'm doing this for your own good. My mother told me nothing good would ever come from going into a man's room alone. Hey, look. Hey, you're young enough to be my daughter. Do I look like the kind she of guy? She said it didn't matter how nice you seemed to be or how nice you was dressed. Look, I... It's been a long time. I haven't been able to get this outfit to the clean. What he offered me, like candy or money or anything. Look, sis, you got me all wrong. Yeah. No, I don't think Hey, Celeste, you said you're going to the bathroom. Oh, can't they out of your sight for a minute, huh? What, afraid she's going to get away or something? Yeah. Come on, Celeste, I'll go with you. No telling what this creep will do. I changed my mind. It's like all this bickering and bothering me. Okay, let's go back in then. Watch the rest of the movie. I think I just want to sit here and be quiet, okay? Okay. So much talking and arguing. It makes me feel funny. So okay. if I get cold, you just sit right here then. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Okay, I've had about enough of you. What do you keep butting me for anyway? Hey, I'm not going to sit here and watch you do this again. I've seen you do this. There lots of young girls coming in here. Most of them hyper-careless about it. When I see a sweet... Nice looking, innocent one like this. Well, it makes me sick. Please, I'm really beginning to feel sick. You see this? You made her sick to her stomach. Now why don't you just shut up and leave her alone? Please stop. I think I might throw up. Come on, this is enough of this shit. Here, I'll take you up to my room. You can lay down. You'll feel better. Please, shit. Just wait a minute. Come on, it'll be all right. I'll take you up. Maybe I could just... Come on, Celeste. Stay out here in mixed company. Look, you drunken prick. Oh, at least I got one. Yeah, I know. You do all your thinking with it. It's about all you've got to work with. Hey, who do you think you are, anyway? You go stomping around here like you own the place. Like you got the world by the tail. What gives with you? How do you come up with such an attitude, anyway? I earned it. Oh, yeah? How? I earned it the hard way. The hard way? What are you talking about? To hear you talk, to watch you marching around here. I don't know how you come by it, but you never seem to need any money. You push people around, you don't give a shit about anybody. Nobody matters to you except yourself. And what are you, a saint? Other people matter to me. Yeah, as long as you can con them out of something they do. How do you know? You're right there. When did you ever give me a thought, huh? What do you mean? I'm really feeling sick now. I mean, from the first time you saw me, you had a beak on about me. Why? You decided I wasn't worth the time of day before you even opened your mouth. You were all set. I had an attitude. You knew all about it. I was a hard case, and all you were going to do was give me a ration right from square one, right? Well, who wouldn't? Look at you. Right now. What do you call this? Goodness and life? I really need to find the bathroom. Look at me. Look at you. 
trying to tell me you came up to me with some big smile on your face like you was from the Salvation Army or something? Oh, you broadcasted, sister. Yeah, you come on. Oh, man, do you come on. It doesn't take a genius to figure you out. In that case, you got all the qualifications. Please, it's someone. Uh, the restrooms are right through there on your left. Thank you. You see that? You see that? You made that young girl sick. Show how much you know, how much you care about other people. I didn't know it was me that made her sick. You smell bad enough to make anyone want to vomit. Oh, Christ, are you good? You want to know why you put me on right from the start, do you? I'm going to show you just how much you do know about me. I do want to know, how's that? I do want to know why you decided to hate my guts before you even said three words to me. I just told you. You act like you're superior, you know? Like you're better than me. Like I was nobody or something. I didn't even know you. Yeah, but you act like you did. Like I wasn't good enough. Not good enough for you, anyway. And how do you think you look to me? I don't know. That's what I mean. What do you mean? I mean, you never stop to think about how you might be coming on to me. I wasn't coming on to you. I mean, coming on to me. There, you see, you don't even have an idea about what I'm saying. You're standing there with your own attitude and you don't even know it. Words are falling out of your face and you have the slightest idea how they're affecting people. And then I saw you. I could tell you were walling yourself up, going on the defensive. I can understand that. We get hardened up. People take advantage. You think you know what to expect, and things don't turn out that way. Okay, but that doesn't mean that you have. I'm fine. Hey, 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 hey! This is Celeste. Now let's just start all over again. Me and JJ, we was just talking, and, and I'm fine. It's all right. And, oh, yeah. Well, listen. Let's just start all over again, okay? I think I'd like to go in and watch some more of the movie. Hey, that's great. You're okay then, right? How about some cherry coke? Would you like some cherry coke then? Maybe Daddy could come in with us. Yeah, sure. Whatever you want. Yeah. That would be fine. Just fine. I I've got an idea. You two go on in. I just gotta get something up in my room. And I guess it'll be okay. Sure it will. Yeah, we've got the whole place to ourselves. Yeah, we'll take the seats right in the middle. Best seats in the house. Or down front, whatever Celeste wants, right, honey? I like to sit a little back, in the middle, like where we were before. Sure, where we were before. Now go in and I'll be right down. Yeah, this will be fine. Just fine. Come on. Come on in, honey.
stuff in. Usually wear it around the back like this, see? That's neat. Kind of like a pocketbook with a belt. Yeah. I had a pocketbook once. Yeah? My mother gave it to me. I had a mirror right on the flap. You open the little cash and turn up the flap. And there you were. It had little pockets on the inside. That's why they called it a pocketbook, I guess. I used to keep my treasures in it. I had a little tiny doll. Only this big. With long blonde hair. Long and silky. And a ribbon. A blue ribbon. And a puppy. A little plastic puppy. With a chain for a ring on his back. Mama gave me a key to the house trailer that went on the chain. A key to the trailer park next to the house, where I was to wait for her if she was with a client. I was to wait there if the shade was pulled down. That was the signal. You wait for me in the trailer if the shade is pulled down, she said. You're not to come in the house if the shade is pulled down. And just like that, my clients work hard all day at the Coopers. They need a good rubdown and some recuperation. So I'd wait in the trailer, like she told me, until the client was gone. I don't know what happened to my mirror. You can't find it? No, but that's okay. Here, let me make you up. And then later on you can look in the mirror and see how pretty you are. Can I do it in my room? I went to a beauty parlor once. Yeah, just like in a beauty parlor. I did my hair and everything, even my nails. I used to work in a beauty parlor once. You'll see. I'll make you look just like Claudette Colbert, like a movie star. Can you do my eyebrows, too? Oh, sure. The whole effect we can do without the eyebrows. No. Let me see. You're beautiful to see me now. Mama used to say I had a sweet mouth, too. It is sweet. Just like a bow. That's a good thing, you know. What is? I have a sweet mouth. Like a bow. Do you ever have anyone tell you your face is sweet? Please? You know. You make a face about something, and they say, you better not do that. Your face could freeze like that, and you'd look that way all the time. Yeah, I suppose. Do you ever think it would? Would what? Freeze like that. No. I used to think so. So I'd put a little smile on my face and hold it, just like that. So if it did freeze, it would be a nice face with a little smile. And then from the Cooper's thought I had a nice smile. Nicer than my mom, as some of them said. When mama got sick, and they took her to the hospital, I used to sit in the house and wait for the men from the Coopers to come around. They were nice to me. They used to bring me presents and give me money. Money so I could buy things. Things that I needed. They said all I had to do was go right on like I was. And they would keep coming around to make sure I was all right. And they did, too. What happened to your mother? Oh, she never came back from the hospital. Well, didn't anyone come around to check on you? I mean, from the hospital or from school? And the men from the Coopers said they already took care of that. They said they would make sure I was all right. I was to tell them if I needed anything, anything at all. I was to tell Carl if I needed even the tiniest little thing. Carl? He was foreman at the Coopers. I never knew my daddy, <laughs> but Carl was like a daddy to me. He showed me everything, taught me all about what I was supposed to do, showed me how my mama used to give him a rub down and recuperation. Recuperation? Is that what they called it? Of course. I was old enough now, they said. It was time that I took on my mama's clientele. <laughs> clientele. That's French or something. Carl said all these men were clientele, and that he was foreman of the clientele. <laughs> No, that's a bad word. Carl said, said what? that I was never to use it. Him? Never, and none of, none of the people either. Kind of upset him, huh? He got into a big fight once. Probably because one of them used that word. I'll bet. It was a Saturday. One of the clientele brought in a fellow from Yulton. Yulton. That's the next town over. He said he was his brother-in-law and that it would be okay. Carl said it wasn't okay, and they started arguing. The fellow called Carl a, you know, that word. Carl hit him in the stomach. He got sick, and it made me sick, too, so I ran upstairs. 
I never saw the fellow again after that. Celeste, did Carl ever hit you? No. Never? No. He never hit you? No. You can tell me. No. He hit you, didn't he? No. You're not telling me the truth. Yes, I am. I don't believe you. He never hit me, and that's the truth. Yes, he did. No. They always hit. Carl never hit me. They hit and they shake, throw you down, I know. They want to hurt you. They want to show you how powerful they are, how manly, muscular, how strong. They aren't strong. They aren't strong at all. All they want is power, power over you. They want to dominate everyone. Never. Control. It isn't a sex thing, you know? It's a power thing, a control thing. They think they've been selected, anatomically identified as a dominant member of the species, keepers of the sacred seeds. But you know what? There's more to it than that. We feel, you know that? Every person we come in contact with leaves an impression. One day you're swimming around with the amoebas and, and you meet someone you can connect with. Sure, you bumped into a lot of others. But this one is special. There's a connection somewhere. Mama told me that everybody is special. But you still have to be careful. Yeah, they you say careful. It makes you feel like you've got to be afraid, like something scary is going to happen. Look, I'm not trying to say that there are people out there that are trying to take advantage, because there are. But what you have to do is follow your own instincts. Things can go wrong. There was a time for me like that. What do you mean? I was living upstate with my brother. Well, he was older than I was and kind of quiet. I was in between jobs and looking around, and, and he and his wife offered me a place to stay. Well, I didn't want to at first, but I didn't have much money. I didn't think I'd have to stay very long. Did you? What did I want? Stay very long. Long enough. Long enough? Long enough to know that I should have followed my instincts. Your instincts? There was nothing wrong with my instincts. Well, what happened? I followed my instincts. So what happened? I followed my instincts and I fell in love. Fell in love? With Karen. Karen? My brother's wife. You're supposed to love everyone in your family. What's wrong with that? It was like the amoebas, see? Amoebas? We connected. There's something special there. I knew it, but she didn't at first. I don't even remember my first time. We just kept getting thrown together or alone. I mean, Michael would stay out all night with boys or, or work late or something like that. We used to play new movie stars. Karen would get all pissed off. We'd sit around, sulk, watch TV. Pretty soon we started talking and, I don't know, we started getting close and, and touching and stuff like that. I was Marilyn Monroe once. It just seemed so natural. Well, not at first. The first time was kind of strange. But then we got to be more natural. And soon we're at the point where we hope Mike wouldn't come home. And we seemed to stay out more. Karen didn't complain about us not being with him. Hey, what's going on? Perfect. Is the movie over? Right. Hotel Fedor. Is that him? It is, isn't it? He always calls around now. Yes, sir. We are. I see. I, I, I told you. See, it is him, just like I said. So who? The man. He's manager. The, he's the owner. Owner, manager. What's the difference? Hey, sir. Hey, hey, ask him if I can have my room key. I'd like it. Ask him. Come on, ask him. He heard you. <laughs> he heard me? I always hear you. Well, how about it then? You may use the lobby and the movie theater until you're current on your fast food bill. Great. That's just great. Yes, sir. I'll tell them. Yes, sir. All right. Goodbye. Well, I guess that takes care of you. What do you know about it? I can see, can I? I can hear, can I? Hey, while you're down here cooling your heels in the lobby, Celeste and I are going up to my room. I've got my key. Hey, you know what? The movies play all night. Maybe you could get Bellman to put them some cartoons or something. Come on, Celeste. We're going up. I guess it'll be okay. I'm sure I'm it will. I'm sorry, but the owner, owner cannot permit that. What? It's not permitted. Not permitted? This is the first I've ever heard about it. You've heard about it before. But you've never said anything before. It wasn't necessary to say anything, was it? What do you mean? Well, you always use the movie theater to watch the movies. But you knew Celeste would be spending the night with me. Not in your room. What do you mean? Of course we're going up to my room. I'm sorry. Hey, don't you get it? The manager isn't going to let you seduce the 
this little bird. You see, there are still some people in the world that hold on to morality. <coughs> How about that? Ha. You are all stay here. They'll call back in a little while. What? What are you talking about? I'll change the reel. What reel? The movie reel. I'll put the next one on for you. I don't want to see any more movies. Do it yourself. <laughs>
what are you trying to do? And you're not buying into this whole routine, are you? Come on! Jeez. As if there was the remotest chance that I could have anything to do with this kid. The chances are a million to one. Ninety million? Oh, God, the shit I'm getting out of here. Hey, open this door. How come this door is locked? Huh? It's after hours. After hours? It's never been after hours before. What are you talking about? Open that door. Open that goddamn door, Feldman. God damn it. We moved to Buellton from Chicago. That's what Mama said. But then we had to move back here. That's what she told me. She's off her nut. Look at her. She's like in a trance or something. Karen used to do that. She's... You're all crazy. Just before that night. What the hell are you talking about? Open this door. I'm getting out of here. We think you'd be back so soon. I swear, Bellman, if you don't get over here and open this goddamn de door, I'm coming over that desk. I mean, what are you supposed to say when something like that happens? I could feel myself like I was on fire and cold, sort of, all at once. You can't keep me here. I can get out. There's a fire door. Forgot about that, didn't you? You son of a bitch.
of trouble. I came to the city to get out of trouble. But no one would help me. I didn't have enough money. The men from the Coopers, they gave me some money and sent me to the city to get out of trouble. But it wasn't enough. Mama had told me what I had to do. I did that. And then I came here. I needed to come here. Are you afraid of me? Why would I be afraid of you? I don't want you to be afraid of me. I'm not. Well, that's what I mean. Some people are afraid of me. I don't know why they're afraid. They just are. They think I'm some kind of predator or something. Either for them or for their children. I mean, what is it about us? I mean, us as human beings, all of us. I mean, it seems like some people are less threatened by someone with a weapon than by someone with a sexual drive that's different than ours. I mean, there are plenty of predators out there. Racist, political, religious. I mean, people kill one another. They discriminate them and us. That's the byword. That's the shame and tragedy of it all. They make it impossible to live with. Crowd you in a corner, seal you in a black envelope sealed on all sides, fold it over and crushed into a tiny little ball. All that I ever knew was the men from the Coopers. But don't you see? You were their property. They used you whenever they wanted, and when you got in trouble, as they put it, they left you to take care of it on your own. And they gave me money. If that wasn't enough, you found that out yourself. They were nice to me. Nice to you? They used you. They never hurt me. Many of their friends ever got too rough. And they would punch them and then send them away. Then they would make it up to me by taking me to a movie or buying me a new dress. I even had a kitten once. But they didn't let you out. Don't you see that? You were their property. You were a slave. No, I wasn't. I've seen slaves on television. They're whipped and tortured. They do awful things to slaves. They never did any of those things to They me. sent you out into a world you knew nothing about to take care of a mistake they made. They left you to do their dirty work. None of them even came to see if you'd be okay. They just left you to take care of it on your own. I did what Mama told me to do. You gave yourself an abortion. Like Mama told me. That big society out there would say that you took the life of your own child. But you killed it. I didn't kill anybody. I would never kill anybody. You want to go in and watch us of the movie? I guess so. I like to watch what other people are doing in the movie. I mean, even if it's one I've seen before, you know? Yeah, I know. I think I've seen every movie that ever was. I mean, even if it's a new one, it's like one I've already seen. They're like each other. Another question. 
question for you. You got a bar in this place? I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. Hey, look, um, I, I don't suppose you got a cigarette on you? I don't smoke. No, 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 no. That's not what I asked you. I know. Did you ever have a cigarette? Once a long time ago, I threw it away. Around here? You get it? Was it around here? We've been expecting you, Mr. Weber. We have a room ready for you. Matter of fact, it's just become vacant. Payment is due on the 1st and the 15th of each month. Each month? Hey, look, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be staying here anyway. One can never be sure in uncertain times like these. Call you hobby. 